These commodities are set to boom, says Aussie fund manager. In a recent podcast, uh, Regal Funds Manager or Founder and CIO, Chief Investment Officer, uh, Phil King, described how bullish he is on commodities this year and for the remaining decade. Pretty much similar uh, opinions to myself. So I thought I would share a couple of key clips from this interview. I'll put the full interview in the description below, but I thought I'd share a few clips of this interview with you guys and then also just share my thoughts at the end and how I see the whole commodity landscape right now with a similar setup to uh, to a previous bull market. My question getting there is that 15% compound annual growth rate comes with quite a ride that goes along with it. And is your mind, in your mind, is that sort of volatility worth the return? Look, we certainly think it is. Um, you know, we certainly would encourage all our investors to take a longer term perspective. And as you, you know, part of your job is to hold their hand. Yep. Um, and, you know, I would suggest that the last four or five years have been quite unusual in terms of the volatility we've seen in markets. Um, and, you know, we all know that small cap, small companies can provide higher volatility um, than the broader market especially if you look at the mix of stocks in the Australian Small Companies Index, which is a mix of, um, you know, early stage growth companies, resource companies, and you compare that to the broader market, which, dare I say, is a little bit more boring, containing mm -hmm. banks and supermarkets and Telstra. Um, and layer on top of that, the fact that our small companies fund is a 150-50 fund. And so by that, I mean for every dollar, that an investor might give us, we're actually giving them two dollars of exposure, maybe a dollar fifty of long positions and fifty cents of short positions. And you know, the beauty about that is that when it works, such as last year, it really goes well. Um, but obviously, you know, when times are challenging, like all levered products, you know, that can be a little bit more challenging. Um, and so, you know, in the long term, I've got a lot of conviction that you know the small companies fund that we have will outperform. Um, you know, that 150 50 structure not only allows us to give um, the opportunity to add more alpha on the short side, but it means that we can run our long positions slightly bigger than a long only fund. And that means that, you know, when we are going well, you know, the returns can be very attractive. And Phil, you, you talked about the composition of the Australian Small Companies Index, and it appears to me that around the world, the Small Companies Index is tend to outperform their sort of core, um, you know, S&P or the main market index, the bigger brother of them, if you'd like. But in Australia, it tends to underperform. Is that because there are so many mining and smaller companies and maybe some companies that shouldn't be listed at all in that index? <laughs> um, I wouldn't suggest there's any companies, I don't know, maybe in the index that shouldn't be listed. Um, I would put it slightly different. I, I think many things in markets move in cycles um, and I'm not sure what time frame you're looking over, but certainly over many time frames, small companies outperform. And certainly our view has been for a while that over the next five or 10 years, mm -hmm. small companies in Australia will not only outperform, but outperform significantly against the broader market. And that's for many, many reasons, but you know, a couple of them, might be purely the fact that we are bullish resources. Uh, you know, we do think the market in Australia should do well over the next five or 10 years. And we are, you know, a little bit cautious on the growth prospects of many of the 10 largest companies in Australia, because I think a lot of them are, dare I say, at X growth. Um, and so, yeah, we think um, small caps is a great place to be. Um, you know, some of the exciting things in our small cap portfolio are what we call um, global leaders and, and many companies like Life360, Ineos, um, many others are what we would call global, you know, companies that are leaders in their field mm -hmm. that in, in some cases are moving from losses to profits. 
And obviously, when you start making profits, the growth in the first couple of years can be quite spectacular. And so, uh, yeah, we've got a number of companies in our portfolio that are in that position where the growth can be very exciting over the first few years. Um, and also, you know, we do have exposure to some of the resource companies that I think will do well over the next few years. So is the IPO window going to open again this year, do you think? I don't think the IPO window will <laughs> open for a while. Don't tell all my broker friends, but <laughs> I think it's well and truly shut for a long time. But let's just keep that between ourselves. Okay. Um, and, yeah, but on the flip side of that is I don't think, um, you know, we need the IPO window to open. And one of the things that makes me excited about the listed small cap market is that some of the valuations we're seeing in the listed space are a lot cheaper than some of the unlisted valuations. And so we think listed small caps is a great place to be. And, you know, we're very excited about resources. We mm -hmm. think we're in the start of a multi-year up a bull market in resources. And Tell us a little bit about that resources royalty fund and that strategy. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're bullish resources. We think there's been a huge underinvestment at the same time we've seen you know, we're seeing structural changes in the demand for various commodities. And so um, for many reasons, I think uh, we'll see resources outperform. And the beauty about the resource fund, uh, the royalty fund, is that it gives investors exposure to rising commodity prices without all the uh, uh, risk and, and impact of rising costs, which you get through owning equities. And so, you know, many... Uh, shareholders, many equity holders miss out on the benefits of rising commodity prices because uh, there's huge cost inflation in both CapEx and OpEx. Um, but the royalty fund just takes a share of the top line of revenue. And so, um, you know, that's, I think, a great way to get exposure to rising commodity prices. And so we very much like that and we're very comfortable with that exposure in, in the Regal Investment Fund. And then finally, the other large exposure that we've grown over recent years is our private credit strategy. You know, I think this has become quite popular, and, but with good reason is because banks are stepping back from lending. Banks are getting, dare I say it, strangled a little bit by all the capital requirements and, and uh, paperwork that yep. they Post need to GFC, do. Post-GFC, all the changes yeah. with Bile 3 and 4 all and all those safeguards. And all that, yep. and they're making it harder and harder to, for banks to uh, lend money to, to people, and as a result, there's been a real gap in the market that's allowed private credit funds to, to spring up. And certainly we're very proud of what we've built at Regal. Our private credit fund is, you know, annualising double-digit returns um, without, you know, we think too much risk at all. And so I think that's very attractive in the current environment and a great place to be exposed to. Yeah, we're, we're still positive on battery metals longer term, but certainly, as you say, I'd say, not only has it been a bumpy ride for lithium, it's been an absolute train crash. Um, and so, yeah, that's probably surprised many people. Um, and certainly um, it's put a lot of companies under a lot of pressure in the listed market. Um, and that's something that we're very, very focused on. Um, we do think that, you know, in the longer term, there's going to be strong demand for battery metals. Um, but it's just one of those situations where supply grew a lot faster than expected and faster than demand over a short period of time. So, yeah, we haven't had much exposure to lithium for a while, which has been very fortunate. We've done well in some other niche commodities. We've done very well in a stock called WA1, which uh, has, has discovered a great deposit of IOBM, which is something I've learned a lot about, uh, which is... Uh, you, what, what, what is it? I, I don't IOBM. know. IOBM. It's, okay. um, it's uh, used in strengthening steel. Um, it's also used as a fire retardant, which uh, has some exciting implications for things like electric batteries and things like that. But there's only two or three of those mines in the world at the moment. So that's a great opportunity for WA1. And so that's a stock that's done incredibly well for our portfolios in the last year or two. Um, and so, look, one of the benefits of having a large team is that we have a great resource team. And so we've got a mining engineer, a geologist and an investment banker in our resource team and so we get to look at lots of companies and um, I think like many sectors, you know, mining is an area where it pays to have experts and so I've learned a lot um, from these guys over the last few years and that's very exciting. So this is WA1 resources which Phil mentioned in that clip 
And uh, yeah, it's about 13 bucks today. You go back um, to 2022, 18 months ago, it was 13 cents. So even while commodities and especially resource miners and exploration companies have been absolutely hammered, like literally the last two years, Two, the last two years have been shocking for exploration investors, uh, small cap mining stock investors. But even in those type of markets, you can find those gold nuggets and WA1's one of them. Uh, I've shared with um, you know, my insiders. Now, you guys know that I love small caps. I love the macro outlook for commodities and real assets. So small caps, small value, um, that's where I'm at. And right now the market has just been selling off like no tomorrow. And for most people, they hate that. They hate that. But I have just been thanking Mr. Market almost daily for the last year. Because there's so many exploration stocks, small cap mining stocks that have got significant resources at significant grade that have just been pummeled by the market. And there's massive mispricing. And being a contrarian investor, tend to, especially in the resources space, you kind of got to be a uh, contrarian investor to really make the big gains. You've got to be buying when nobody wants a particular resource or resources stocks in general. You don't want to be buying when every person, every mum and dad, every fund manager, everyone is pouring into the market, pushing the market up. That's when I like to be selling. But it's easier said than done. As I said, most people do not like uh, buying when, when, when markets are absolutely selling off. And, and look, insiders will know my small cap exploration portfolio. And some of those stocks have been absolutely hammered. But it doesn't bother me. In fact, as I said, I think Mr. Market each and every day uh, because it's been a wonderful buying opportunity. And it actually reminds me where we're at right now, how much, the, especially the small cap uh, mining market, it reminds me of another period of time where also nobody, nobody loved it. Nobody wanted anything to do with it. Guess what? It was the time to buy. So crude oil in 2001, you know, it was under $20. And from 2001 up to around $140. No one wanted commodities. Look at gold. Same thing. Go around 2001. You know, it was $250, $260, $270 around this, this point in time. And what did it get to? $1,900. In 2011, silver, 2001, no one wanted it. No one loved it. Four bucks, you know, almost 50 bucks, 2011. Copper, same thing, 2001, no one wanted a bar of commodities and especially small cap miners. No one wanted a bar of it. Look at the run it went up on, you know, five years later. Nice. Platinum, similar, massive run up. Nickel, same thing, massive run up. Now everyone was getting in around this time period when, when the markets have shot up. The time to buy was back when no one wanted it. And so when, when markets are selling off and, and almost giving away these stocks, I mean, the valuations on some of these stocks that, I, that I've got is just ridiculous and <laughs> I'm happy to take it. And for us Aussies as well, 
um, at the time the Aussie dollar was sub sub fifty around the same time time period. So yeah, it's uh, it's tough being a contrarian small cap value mining investor. Uh, but for me, um, going through many cycles, having ups and downs, um, I want to buy when no one wants to buy. And I'm going to sell when everyone wants to buy. Um, you know, hearing Phil, Phil King from Regal Funds Management, how bullish he is on commodities moving forward. You know, he's such a big player at Regal Funds Management. Uh, you know, him and others getting into, if they start getting into that small cap, and that's where he's bullish too, that small cap mining space. I want to be positioned before all the money comes in. I, I want to buy in 2001. I want to be selling in 2008, 2011, those, those sorts of times. Anyway, guys, I'll put the full video, the interview with uh, Phil King in the description below. I recommend listening to it all. Uh, it's a good interview. Anyway, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Love to see your thoughts and comments in the uh, comments below. I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut. And just a reminder, the information provided in this video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Nothing on this channel constitutes as financial advice. The information in this presentation is no substitute for financial advice, and all investors should seek advice from a licensed financial advisor having regard to your own objectives, financial situation, and needs.